Yes, Thanks, you're right. here. Yeah. Hello, Yay. everybody. Welcome. I was on time, I promise, but you know, what are you going to do? Hello. What do you do? Hello. Uh, um, Laura, I'm you also not going to H and H. So everybody I know was waiting on that. Um, they were holding their breath, but I'm not, I'm not going. So <laughs> great. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Um, Laura, it looks like you're standing. I am. There is, um, there is no surface in this house that isn't covered with a project right now. So we're doing this. I'm doing a background. Well, that's exciting. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, I'm just yeah. working on stuff. So we're not sitting at the normal spot. We can't, uh, nice. we can't look over here. Can't we can't look it. over here. And we certainly can't yeah. look back there. So we're here. We're going to stand here. That's what's going to happen. Yeah. Oh, that sounds great. Yeah, I love that. Um, yeah. Uh, so we were just filling people in about uh, H and H. Uh, there's yarn drama in the yarn world, Laura. Did you oh. read about? No. <laughs> Tell me. Uh, apparently, um, Lion Brand bought Quince and Company. Okay. On the surface, I don't think that's a bad move. Interesting. On the surface, I don't think that's a bad move. Um, I know nothing. I say that knowing nothing about the details. Um, but, you know, Quince um, has had hella drama in the past, which is correct. Yes. And yes. Yeah, I am. It's a live report from my craft room, which is to say this has potential to be a good thing because I don't feel that Quince ever necessarily fixed their issues. They just kind of publicly went like thoughts and prayers and then didn't really do anything. So. Right. It'd yeah. be nice. It'd be really nice to, um, if they could keep that yarn going, it's nice yarn, but yeah, it's, it's super nice yarn. And it, on the surface, you would think that lion brand would be able to widely distribute it. Which would be uh, nice. It'd be nice to yeah. have lion brand have more options within their scope too. But I wonder if it's like an absorb thing or if it's going to be a boutique line, that'll be interesting. What, did you, yeah, well, you read say anything about it? Well, everything that I was reading was uh, people just freaking out and thinking it's bad because everyone's normal reaction to any change oh. is thumbs down. Mm. Um, and also, uh, Maya in the chat is exactly right that the post on Instagram gave no information. It They made a reel that was like the lion brand uh logo quince and co now they're together exclamation point that was it there was nothing else happening so i was reading the comments generally comments i don't read those i don't know it's what's not going a good on. idea it's not a good no. strategy so then in the comments now these are unsubstantiated reports of course but in the comments they were saying that uh lion brand you know bought Quince and Co and then told all the Quince and Co employees that they had to reapply for their jobs, which fair enough, they have their own situation, sure. but then Lion Brand doesn't offer, hasn't offered them any health insurance. Uh, so people are like, all right, well, this isn't a good package for us. Um, and then again, <laughs> apparently, Lion Brand said, well, then we'll have to replace your jobs if this isn't good enough for you. Well, there's a lot going on there. Um, a lot to yeah, all I could, unpack. Yeah, all I could really add to that is more speculation, which isn't helpful. But um, I would say I have a sneaking suspicion that um, the valuation of Quince & Co. way down um, due to reasonable concerns that consumers had about that brand Yes, and in their business practices, which so it was probably to be bad. A good business move on Brian Brand's, Brian Brand's part to acquire the brand at a low, low price, but that doesn't mean they had the infrastructure in place to take on employees. So, you know, th it turns out um, that if you're dealing with a large, I mean, we would say Lion Brand is a large brand. Um, I would say, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, if, if you're partnered with like a national chain and you're you're widely available across the country, I think you're a large brand. In our world, large can mean a lot of things, but um, they're going to operate quite differently than perhaps 
uh, Quince did when it was um, independently owned. It's not to make excuses. Yeah. It's not to say people should be fired. People should have health insurance. Um, Everyone I can't should have surprised. health insurance. I no, just can't absolutely not. And yeah. I think it's a little disingenuous for people to say that they are because that's weird. That's how it's weird. And I think that a lot of people were saying, um, uh, I think a lot of people were concerned that the value of the yarns at Quince were uh, like up for debate or going to be changed in some way and that we don't know what's going to happen they literally just said hey yeah now we're together and that so, I, not to speak for you Allison I'll just totally speak for myself but that is a lot of the like snobby yarn shit that I don't like I don't like yes that. oh you mean it can be yes. more accessible to people and widely available that must mean it's worse I disagree. Right. And I think I you need to look inward. Too. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I absolutely. Calm down. And if Lion Brand, who has some really beautiful yarns at really nice prices mm -hmm. that make it more accessible to people, they also have lines that are 100% acrylic mm -hmm. that are very well priced for people because yep. they're they're not um, natural fibers. Um, th you know, these things can exist harmoniously and separate from each other. Right. So just to assume that the quality of Quince's yarn is going to go down because Lion Brand has acrylic yarn, that's just, uh, yeah, snobby yarn person shit that Which we I fight hate. against all the time. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So yeah. more accessible yarn for people who, that's good. Right. Okay. That's good. Yeah. So if Lion Brand can use their distributors to widely, more widely distribute this quality yarn, hey, that's a good thing. But again, we don't know what Lion Brand's going to do with this yarn. Uh, we don't know what Lion Brand's going to do with this brand. Having it be something like their LB collection, I think I saw that in the chat from somebody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's super nice yarn. That's at their like boutique shop. Um, mm -hmm. You know, that's fun. That's more exclusive, um, you know, at a higher price point. Um, so, you know, there is, uh, there absolutely lives a world in which this is a good thing for the yarn world and for yarn. Um, and also capitalism is, uh, yeah, and know, they also could story. totally fuck it up. I mean, this is also a possibility, but just to go straight there, it, yes. you know, it, it means it gives you pause because I certainly feel I'm pretty confident in saying that Lion Brand does know more about the fiber industry than say, um, an Ivy League graduate with a degree in forestry, just for random examples. So I I feel like um, let's all calm down a little bit, but that's not what we do in Fiberland. We like to dial it to 25 with 10% information. So that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. This is why I don't lose because uh, I get all hot and bothered. Uh, not so I much know. about the fact, the facts that, that we have about this much of and the reaction which could fill this entire screen. It just drives me yeah. crazy. Drives no me crazy. kidding. Oh my God. Exactly. Uh, which is why I tend to stay away from the comments, except for no, the lovely comments. I'm so glad. Thank you. I'm so glad Amy's here to put me in my place. Um, trees do contain fibers and therefore by the transitive property, you should run a yarn business. So I'm sorry. I should check my privilege. Um, but yeah. <laughs> Well, just call us the Cliff Notes gals. The Cliff Notes gal is, girl is one of my favorite ladies on TikTok because people like tag her and she'll be like, in two seconds, here's what's going on in the drama. And she does a great job. So I feel like we Cliff Noted this pr pretty well. Pretty well. I think so too. Yeah, I think too so. So keep your eye on the drama or I swear, just don't. And just don't read the comments. Because everyone's just don't dumb, read but the us. comments. Yeah. But they're draw they are drawing people to the comments. If you if your big announcement it has one sentence. That seems to be the um, PR strategy of the decade for the fiber industry, where it's like big announcement, one sentence, and then it's just speculation, speculation, fire, fire, fire. And they're like, yeah. who can say? And it's like, you're making this a lot worse. You're making I this don't worse for yourself. Say what you need to say. I don't. Yeah. It drives me fucking yeah. crazy. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Maya. We're going to stop says, reading the chat curate. because we're yes. going to put this in a public facing platform, but you all know. I'm sure you're thinking of several examples right now. Um, yeah. And you know exactly. I'm right. 
You know, yeah. I'm right, so. uh, Maya just said Peary okay. in the comments, yep. Yep. right? Because, uh, yeah, exactly. When we were all like, what the hell is going on with Peary? This is like so completely insane. Is this real? Is this fake? Is Peary going away? Uh, yeah. Just tell us, please. We'll give you our money still. God. And again, we're, um, we're no experts except we are because we are consumers. And so we know, we know how this goes. Like we spend a lot of our life online. So I've, I've never understood why when these things happen, there isn't just a, a single link to your website with all the FAQs. Whatever you would read on Reddit and have people super sleuth together, why wouldn't you just write it all up? and pop that on your website. Why is it better to have Good people speculate SEO and well. spread tons yeah. of misinformation it's I don't agree that all news is good news. Like I just don't anymore. It's, no. People have this much time to give to this and if they take away the wrong thing that's what they're going to be telling everybody. Yeah. Seems weird. Totally. Seems weird. Yeah. And uh, so Christine just said in the in the chat um so Quince is going to be available at Joanne's. Right. That that's makes, just a rumor that, we started just now. Just now. And, and that would bring quality yarn to a wider audience, which I is would a sincerely good love thing. that. Yes. I would love that. Mm -hmm. But people hate when their special babies are available to everyone because when a quality feels like oppression, that means your feelings are wrong. Ooh, hot take. And hey, I I'm gonna say. Um, this, that also can be the reaction of some local yarn shops who feel like large companies are coming for them. Um, and I just think that there are plenty of independent yarn lines still out there. Um, and having more, at, like more quality and interesting options available at big box stores can draw more people to your store because it's a way, it's like a graduated thing. So I don't think these two things exist in conflict. I know it's a very spicy hot take already dreading our comment section, but I don't care. Bring them. Yeah. Bring them. I stand by it. Um, yeah. Uh, just universally, if there are more knitters, everybody wins. Yes. Or crocheters for that matter. You know, I mean, oh, yeah. again, like uh, any fiber person getting to work with different materials is a plus. You don't know what you don't know. And having access to your materials in a place that you shop at regularly, very helpful. So yes. a lot of people don't know from acrylic because that's what's available and people right. shit all over that. And I hate that. Yes. And it makes people self-conscious and not want to join communities like Lori Allison party or go mm -hmm. to their yarn stores or go to knitting meetups because the feeling uh, that they're doing something wrong, uh, which is bad. Yeah. Raise your that. hand if you have been that. to a yarn shop and felt like you broke an invisible set of rules. Um, just, just, uh, I think a lot of people are now typing. Uh, I just, I have, I've been to multiple yarn shops and felt like I broke rules in all of them that I didn't know about. And yeah. it's a challenging thing because we're all a little bit socially anxious. I don't care. I don't, I mean, I'm pretending I pretend I'm very anxious. So, uh, why in the chat? I can't believe this. You're not, now you all are going to leave us out here. You're all, you're all like, I'm not touching that. I'm not touching that with a 10 foot pole. Okay, good. Several people are now typing. I just, I want you to agree. <laughs> so Laura. Yes. I have an actual surprise to show you. Oh, cool. I love surprises. Now I say actual surprise because a lot of times I'm like, Laura, I have something to show you. And you know okay. it already because we already talked about it. Right. And I really don't know what's about to happen. I don't. Now you're not holding on to your butt. Well, I was, you're not taking your top off to reveal a swimsuit. So I thought that's what was going to happen. <laughs> this is a surprise, but not an entire surprise because I came prepared with a yarn reveal as well. Unboxing? Like, we An unboxing? Thing. Yes, because I saw a B reel where this was happening. So I'm surprised that you're doing it now, but I know how you are. So I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready. But that looks like the porcelain sweater to me. Um, it and is. it's very beautiful. Very beautiful. Did we talk about this last week? I can't remember where you showed your yarn. I showed my yarn. I showed okay. my yarn. Okay. Yes. So this is indeed the porcelain sweater. It's I beautiful. 
dark. I swatched it. And then I was like, well, I got to see this in action. Look at how beautiful it is. So I'm holding Camper from Calborn Woolen so together good. with Surrey Alpaca from the Fiber Company. From Nope. From Farmer's Daughter. Uh, and look at how pretty it is. I'm I'm so in. I'm so in. And I've been here's my seek panel. I've, I brought other knitting to show because I haven't had time to swatch this, but my yarn did arrive. I said I would show my yarn because um, you're using um, fingering held double, right? Yes. Nice. And so that the I love the halo. It's so good. And yeah, the color, so we your um, salmon color of the farmer's daughter, the yeah. um, Odang is reads really orange in the skein but it's complementing that pink so beautifully it looks so good Pretty cool. yeah, thank, you. Yeah. thank you maya for sharing the um link in the chat for yeah, those of you who are alive mm -hmm. it, yes lee lee oh what do we think i don't know i keep i keep changing it up so if anyone's got the definitive pronunciation of lena's name please let us know um i'm sure amy knows she's typing thank oh, God. thanks they're probably best friends yeah um uh, production assistant amy just let us know um so yeah so you're making the dk weight version which is very exciting um and i have decided i'm gonna go the fingering weight route and i'm probably gonna change my contrast color now that i've seen it in the light of day but this is uh cumbria uh cumbria fingering which is in pretty. one of my very favorite colors cat bells I have made one sweater out of this that I didn't particularly enjoy and is on its way to my uh, wink. Um, but I want a, I want this color. This is my favorite color. And yeah, here is what I'm thinking for my contrast. So there is a little I bit of it. in this yarn. And so it has a bit of loft to it, but okay. So we're liking it together. I wanted it to be a little bit icier, a lighter blue, but mm -hmm. now, and I, I don't know. In the natural light, I think it's nice. I guess I'll just. I think that's what's going to happen. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you know, I get to do what I want. And this is, so this will be my main and this will be my CC. I think it's cool. Um, I love oh, it. I'm wrong. Amy, we're beefing now. Um, all right. We're saying there's enough contrast. I feel like Zoom is helping me here, but uh, right, we'll go with see, it. Zoom can be helpful. Yeah. We'll Laura, uh, Amy says, Laura, you are wrong. Those are perfect. Well, so, all right then. So this is my plan to do a fingering weight version of, um, of porcelain. I'm very inspired by Allison, but I've just been out here, uh, like getting stuff ready for classes. So I haven't had a chance to cast on yet, but I'm very excited very exciting. nice nice yeah so people are saying oh there should be a class on this oh yes. well funny. there's not only going to be a class but there's also going to be a retreat mm -hmm. where we do it and the retreat is going to be in the middle of the class so we can uh block we can uh, steak these sleeves if that mm -hmm. is within your practice. I'm going to be steaking mine. Laura's going to be knitting hers back and forth. Yep. Um, maybe a little backwards knitting, the whole shenanigans. It's going to be great. Yes. All right. We so are getting ready be... to partner for the first time in a, cl a joint class that we teach together, um, which is a very hold on your hold on to your butt thing. Um, and though we announced it last week, I feel like we've got some new people here um, who perhaps were not ready for that information. So we're going to, we're really leaning into this like dueling banjos approach. We have yeah. a level up series that we do um, once a month where uh, we're, we're starting the process where we're going to do like cast on a couple of different ways. And we're each going to present our favorite cast on. And we just, we just we're riffing on that theme. And now we're going to like extrapolate that out to knitting sweaters two different ways. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I think it's going to be awesome. And in fact, Laura, tomorrow. Oh, yes. Night, Sorry, Friday. Mm -hmm. yes, yeah, is, yeah, is our first dueling um, yes. level up where we're going to be dueling our cast ons. Yeah, exactly. Yes. And of course, there will be introduction banjo banjo music Leia, you're already well ahead of me there um but yeah 
we do dueling, dueling banjos need lots of banjos. So I hope you'll tune in live uh, tomorrow. But yeah, I think this approach is going to be really fun. It was very much inspired by um, Seamwork, um, the sewing yes. company. They do a nice little YouTube series about like showing different techniques with their various talents. And yeah. I think it's a really fun approach. So. Yeah. You know, y'all love when we're together. You like when we're, you know, in our logo together. You like wearing our faces. And so you just want to hear from both of us. So I think yeah. it's a slam dunk. That's what I think. I think so too. I'm excited about tomorrow night. And if you too are, mark your calendars. It is tomorrow at 6.30 p.m. Central, Central time. Standard time. Central time. I think it's yes. going to be fun. I think it's going to be fun too. And if you have plans on Friday night or whatever... Why? We do Why? post a recording that is exclusive to party members. So if you're mm -hmm. watching this on the YouTubes, uh, maybe you should come check us out. Maybe you should come you check should us really out. You should really sign up. So much content. Yeah. So much uh, content. Behind a very, very reasonably priced paywall. But yeah, I am really looking forward to our very first um, like duel. Uh, I think yeah, it'll be really too. fun. But I think yeah, it will be too. much like the Battle of the Jays that we've been experiencing um, at uh, mid a long night, night uh, yes. that it'll be the least competitive thing on earth and everyone will be like, I like both. You're so beautiful and yeah. smart. And we'll be like, okay. Yeah, that's perfect. The real winners yeah. were the friends we made along the way. So yep. there you go. As usual, as yeah. usual, we like that. Um, so Laura, you have not been knitting the porcelain sweater. Yeah. Have you been knitting anything? I have. Um, I just, I finished my second doodle sock so i'm a doodle champion and oh my woo! god those are so cute uh, thank you i'm very proud of them eagle eye viewers might notice that my toes are no longer um the same color as my heel and cuffs because i lost yarn chicken with this mini skein this like pinkish mini skein that um i it looks like you did it on purpose for. It it does so i had to tear the toe out of one to finish the heel of the other but nevertheless she persisted so yeah this is these are my doodle socks we just wrapped up my doodle maker work group and we had so much fun so these are done i'm very in, in love with them and very yeah. proud of how my me my knee dyed stuff turned knit up like it's such a good use of my mini skeins so these Cute. are done very fun fun yes and then it. i it as i mentioned right it is vest fest so i have our do our joint not a dueling but our collaborative vest the ingrid um slip over vest that i will i'm using for my ingrid slip over class and then once i have everything joined we'll hand back to allison to finish and wear so this is Looking good, right? I mean, this is the wrong side. I love but, it. You did so yeah. much since I saw it last. Yep. So I've got, I've started the front neckline, which we're going to talk about in class. A little preview for my students. Um, and then we've got the next one to do. And then we've got to just finish out the front and join the back. So yeah, I'm really just obsessed with this yarn. I've talked about it enough. You all are sick of it. This Mountain Meadow Wool Laramie 2 ply. But look how beautiful. I'm obsessed. So yeah, that's been grooving right along. And then I have one more thing. Um, tonight, I am teaching outline tea. So I have to have that ready. So I've got my beautiful outline tea, super ready to go. Um, I've got my fronts done. And I've started, I've got little drop stitches to unravel before their very eyes. I've got it like halfway oh, dropped here. Look at Ooh, that. Yeah, we're giving them the razzle dazzle. So here's undropped. And then it's in the process of dropping. So Got some razzle dazzle dazzle for the old students tonight. Very exciting. Uh, love that. Yeah, love super that. in, super into it. So I haven't been in not knitting. It's just not um, the fun, exciting knitting. It's my like job knitting. No, you can't relate uh, to that. All of those things are really beautiful. Yeah, I have to say, I have one other thing that I have been obviously distracted by this. It happens. To knit on this, but. I am making progress. This is my Hubba ripple Hubba. bralette. It's so good that you explained what that was because when it's not stretched and upside down, that looks like the most confusing garment of all time. It's so, it's confounding, I would say. I don't know. This looks like it fits me perfectly, obviously. Yes. It um, looks like a Jester's so... hat right now, but is in fact a yeah. bralette. Well, I think... 
yeah, it is very hat like, and then it has this one. It's perfect. It's you know it. Oh, it's, I'm, it's taking me back. It's taking me back to our slouchy beanie 2010s era. Um, Aww, I was gonna fatigue. say, I was gonna say, Jamiroquai would really like this could, hat yep. as well. That is also a possibility. Um, so you could go back, um, however many years you want to, just not in 2023, which it is right now. For sure. Either um, way, you need a hacky sack. For sure. Yeah. For sure. So I'm trying to finish this up. I really like how the stripy yarn is striping for the strap. I do love a good old I-cord strap that is it's sexy, so good, sexy. Right? So, but I have, I'm at the point now where I have to try it on and I just haven't gotten there. That's fine. Maybe because it's a million billion degrees. I have been ironing all morning, so I'm not, I'm not an accurate depiction of what's actually going on, but it feels like 90 degrees and I wouldn't want at anywhere near my tits right now. Nowhere near. So I don't blame you. Uh, yeah, it's just, uh, I just want to do this and watch Love Island UK. Yeah, fair. Fair enough. Yeah. So, um, Laura, yes. we did, I did mention last week that I was almost done with Selling Sunset. Uh-huh. I watched the new season. I finished it this morning, actually. And I, as I was looking at Instagram this morning, a meme caught my eye yes um and the meme was um if anyone ever needs to use my phone i'm not embarrassed that they're gonna see like naked pictures or something i'm embarrassed that they'll look at the search history <laughs> of my browser because of all of the weird shit that i google and that has never rang truer for me than while I was watching this last season of Selling Sunset, in which one of the new brokers, Bree, mm. um, was not only at one point married to Johnny Menzel. Remember him? I do. Hmm. Okay. Yes. Uh, former and disgraced quarterback of the Browns. Yes. Who knows? Uh she also Not has Bengals. one of Nick Cannon's babies. Well, but that's every woman in Hollywood, as far as I understand it. So that's like a price of admission. But go, yeah. go ahead. Go ahead. Yes, the Browns. Thank you. I thought it was the Browns. And then I was like, was that a different guy? Who, who can remember? Who can remember? Well, but yeah, the Browns, that's we have confirm confirmation from two party people. So the Browns. Indeed. Thank you. Thank you. So she now has one of Nick Cannon's babies and her baby's name is legendary. Legendary, legendary, ah, legendary, legendary. <laughs> uh -huh. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Which I kind of love. It's so completely insane that I'm kind of here for it. I, I mean, had a boyfriend once who was like very against people being named like Junior and the Third because he felt like it was way too much pressure to try to live up to the original. Um, but holy shit, to be named like Queen, Legendary, um, like, you know, Jesus, that's a lot, you know, Jesus. That's, it's a lot woo! of pressure. Mm -hmm. So Legendary has many half brothers and sisters who all also have very unusual names yes morocco etc yes the mm -hmm. original the originals so the the literal last google search uh from on my phone is please give me a list of nick cannon's, nick cannon's baby children's names, names. Uh -huh. um like why would i why would a human want that information in their brains but because of legendary uh, I really needed to know. And the Leia, person, not the HBO Max show. Again, we have to clarify. <laughs> um, Leia said work queen in the chat. Work queen is not one of Nick Cannon's babies, but really close to one of Nick Cannon's babies. Um, uh, one of his baby's names is Beautiful Zeppelin. Ooh, well... Better than lead, I suppose. Um, per, per, I mean, not all Zeppelins crash. Some of them didn't. Yeah. <laughs> but this beautiful Zeppelin is one. But I think Work Queen would also be a really nice name for one of Nick Cannon's babies. So I hope that he has that in his back pocket because obviously there's going right. to be more I, of them. I feel like Lil Wayne has a daughter named Royalty. 
Um, or you know what? That I, could be. There's a lot of royalties out there. That yeah. could be Lil Bow Wow, but regardless, I have a dog named Royal T, basically. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. His name anyway, is I I yeah. always um. It's it's cool having you know being it is Chris Brown. Thank you, Joel. I knew Joel would know. Um, oh, there, thank you, Joel. I, I kind of have a reaction like. I don't know. I kind of have a warm place in my heart for the for the unique name because Me too. of being named the most popular name for girls born between 1982 and 1985. Um, Laura Lauren gang unite. And then my sister is the other popular name, Kate, Katie, Catherine. There's 10 hundred thousand billion of us. And, and it you is know all of them because you tell me stories sometimes about a Kate, you know, and I'm like, I gonna need more information. It's I roll lot. up my scroll and I'm like, yeah. which key are you talking about? From I know scroll? people get all hot and bothered about pronouns, and I'm like, we're all out here. You're all out here naming your sons Alex, Michael, and Chris. So I don't know what you want. Um, why is it so hard for you to like figure out how to have a conversation yeah. and change a pronoun? There Too will much. only be one rise messiah in that kid's class, uh, kindergarten class. There will only be one, and that's okay. nice. Yeah, yeah. You know. the Sarahs are popping up in the chat. And we know the Jenny yeah. gang all too well. The Jennies, the Jennifers, the early 80s gang, the late 70s gang. They love, they know Jen, Jenny, you know, Sarah, Sarahs. They're all, they're yeah. all out here. So all that to say, it is hilarious. LOL, Apple, you know, Apple Martin forever. I always really loved Apple Martin. But, and Moses. But you know what? Um, <laughs> maybe there's something to it because... Yeah. Uh, being the 10,000th Laura from Indiana is the worst, I will say. The worst. Yeah. I didn't go by my first name for like all of high school and college because it's just too, too confusing. So too there confusing. You go. Yeah, exactly. So uh, that's why I, when I saw that meme, I cleared my browser history on my phone just in case I was hit by a bus and someone wasn't like, what's this girl into? Well, speaking of memes, I am not caught up on like the last two seasons of Selling Sunset, I think. It's like I'm not caught up, but I'm caught up, you know. Um, it's like I've seen I've seen all the episodes, but I haven't seen them all. Um, but they're I think based on our conversations, TikTok, my TikTok algorithm keeps serving me this girl who's like clearly like a good nine years older than her little brother, and they just live in this suburb house. And so she's like 16, and they do these skits where she like dresses up in the most insane outfits and like gets out of her car and like throws a purse on, and they pretend they're in Selling Sunset. And her little brother is like six, and he's just like pretends to be the twins, the little bald twins. <laughs> she's like a two feet taller than him, and she's always like picking him up to hug him. It's so dumb and funny, and they're just, they're killing it. Um, <laughs> So oh my and God, that's in the that, so that is literally what happens in every episode is these yep. yeah because they're both of them they're like puppies and the girls are like okay oh, thank you my so boss. Thank you. this yeah. house is beautiful ridiculous yes. ridiculous yeah so. you've done such amazing work here lean over right. and give them a hug yeah ridiculous yeah Anyhow. phenom phenom but now i'm on to love island uk uh, which just dropped the new season just dropped uh, on Hulu. So I've got 88 episodes to watch. I'm going to be on that for a while. So perfect. Well, I should get me you. through. Nice. Thanks to my outline T class. I've been watching somebody somewhere on HBO 20,000 out of 10. That show is so wonderful. So What's shout happening out with that? that? Sorry. What's happening with that? I've never heard of it. Um, it's just it's just a super lovely program. Um, it's Bridget. I cannot remember her last name right now. Um, but yeah, she's like a cabaret star from New York, but she's from the Midwest. It takes place all in Kansas, and it's just a, a girl who like moved back to her hometown to take care of her sick sister, and she's just working at like a test grading. Bridget Everett, thank you. Um, she's working at a test grading center, and this guy remembers her from high school, and they like strike up a friendship, and it's just like. They're all there, the like small town stuff. It's like, it's, it's like slightly queer, but it is just like lovely. It's so well-written. Um, there's two seasons and it was just like, it, these socks are brought to you by somebody somewhere. Um, so I loved it. There's um, the part, the podcast Smartless um, did like a six series, six episode series that I'm just caught up on. Um, but it trolled me so hard. Can I just tell you the story really fast, Allison? Yes. Um, so 
one of my many, as it turns out, pet peeves is like talking about dreams for too long. Like, I, th I think yes. you should be able to, you can tell people about your dreams, but two minutes, like do an egg timer on it. Oh, see, I always say two sentences. Two sentences. Yeah. Because they're never interesting to anybody but you. So you got to like keep it pithy. Right. But it's like, it's, it's just, nasty. it's like keep the weather nasty. and dreams, you know, it's like, oof, tedious. Like, let's just power right through. The other thing that I um, am not really into is the band Wilco. I'm not even sure it exists. Um, it's not, I don't know, but I've been on so many terrible dates with men who are obsessed with Wilco. And at this point, well, that's, very I regionally that's very regionally specific also. Yes. So it's, that's why I was single for so long, everyone, because every, like, I mean, there was a slew of two, three years where every man I went on a first date with was reading <sighs> Jeff Tweedy's fucking autobiography. And I'm like, I refuse to do this. I don't care if they're good. Fuck them at this point. I can't do it. I won't oh, do it. God. Well, I was going to read our comments, but now I'm really never going to. I can't do it. I just, it's a per, I understand I'm wrong or whatever, but at this point I'm doubling down. I just don't want to know. It's by association at this point. How good can they be when their fans are such boring monsters, present company excluded. So I'm watching Smart Life. I think they, maybe just the, the male fans. Could we just say that? Uh, you know what? I'm not going to gender it. No, it's fine. I understand that I'm wrong. I don't care that I'm wrong. You're not going to change my mind. I, you're just not. Um, but due to like, Wilco are boring and I don't want to date them. I think that's, that's where I'm standing. Okay. But let me just tell you. So this the smart list, the premise is they did like a series of live shows to finish the podcast. It's three hosts. They have a surprise. One of the guests is responsible for bringing a surprise guest to the show and they interview the surprise guest. So in Chicago, they had Andy Richter on and he's like talking about his second city days. It's a nice time. And then all of a sudden they're like, wouldn't it be great if we had a su another surprise guest and out comes Jeff fucking Tweedy onto the stage and he sits down, Allison, and starts to tell them about a dream he had. <laughs> and I'm just here in my apartment screaming, screaming. I was just like, are you fucking serious? Like, come on. Come on. I love this city. I mean, they ate portillos before the show. Like, they really went for it. But holy shit. I was like, I'm in hell. I am in actual hell. This is tough. This is tough. And it's three, it's all four white men. And of course, they bring on their favorite person, Jeff fucking Wilco. At least one of them's gay, but Jesus Lord. So I just had to share that. that was what really was his dream about? Who cares? Who cares? Who cares? Who cares? I don't know. And then they did the thing where he's like, they're like, oh, I wish you would sing a song. He's like, I didn't bring a guitar. And then out of the wings, they bring him a guitar. And I was like, <laughs> no, it's a no. Anyway, I know we're canceled now. So this has been fun doing three episodes. It was a nice ride. We made it three episodes. Yeah. Um, but, we made it oh, three episodes. That's nice. It was tough. I tough. would say, I would probably say that, um, Wilco male, cis white male Chicago living gentlemen are not really our, uh, demographic. Demographic. No, show, but y'all so. are married to them. So, yeah. you know, um, I get it. Bye. I'll, I'll go now. But again, I don't say that I'm right. It's that the association, I can't do it. It's like, once you get food poisoning, you're not going to have the pad thai again. Like it doesn't matter that pad thai is delicious. You can't take, have pad thai anymore. It's just not for you. Yeah. And that's what's going on with me and Wilco. Can't do it. I have had. You've been so poisoning. personally burned. Yes. yes. By these boring dudes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So that's what it is. Anyway, I thank you for letting feel me like share. probably the longest, there's a really long list of shit uh, that cis, white, boring men from Chicago have ruined. Mm -hmm. um, and Wilco just might be at the top. Yeah. I mean, at least I didn't have a relationship with them to ruin. Um, but absolutely. Yeah, for sure. You know, um, can I show you this weird, this dumb thing that I bought that you won't approve of, but I love? Oh no, I saw you waving something around and I was like, that look that does look stupid. What? This is a nursing clipboard. 
that is tri-fold. <laughs> so you can put your printed knitting chart in here and then fold her up and put it in your bag. Uh, do you have an affiliated link for that product? No, I was they're... rejected from the Amazon affiliated link program because I'm not <laughs> famous enough. But I was like, it does seven come with a lot of very graphic tables and charts. I did have to take this one off because I want to put stickers on it. Just a little goo gone. But there is helpful things like this: these uh, millimeter measurements. There's conversion charts. Um, and then um, very complicated math about metabolic rates that I don't understand. But yeah, hell yeah. Mm. I wanted there, I've seen um, ones that fold in half, but when this trifold came my way, baby, I was like, hell yeah. So this was very helpful. Um, I could put my little doodle cards on here and take them on the go. So uh, yeah, this nursing clipboard, 10 out of 10. Love it so much. I love yeah. It. Yeah, uh, I can see why that uh, if you uh, search things that Laura will like, mm -hmm. all of the clipboard things will pop up. Uh, yep. Laura loves clipboards as much as she hates Wilco. That's true. It's I stand by that conversion. statement. Is that Is conversion also, on the chart? Um, there, the limit does not exist. It says right here. So there you go. But there's, yeah, it's helpful. Like there's a, there's a millimeter measurement and a little ruler and you know, you can convert these like two, three, four, these are needle sizes. So it's quasi relevant uh, and I freaking love it. And this is why every time I'm like, I'm going to start saving for an iPad with a pencil. That's it for me. And then I'm like, or oh, I could spend $13 on a nursing clipboard and fuck it. So that's, that's what yeah. I bought. I love it. I like that. We don't need those iPads. Mm -mm. Those are for really young people and really old people. You know, everyone looks so good with their pencil and they've really got their lives sorted out. But again, I just love standing in my wrongness. And then I, now I have a little clipboard. <laughs> a little pocket book. Uh, well, that does look like a really nice uh, area to put a stickers on. It does. And you know I love a sticker. So, you know. We love stickers around you know. here. Go to yeah. Sarah. Sarah loves a stick. Sarah loves a sticker too. Yeah. I mean, I'm filling up my commemorative poster sticker board with all of our Allison, Laura Allison stickers I'm running out of real estate. So um needed new things to stick. So that's um Laura, could you hold that up again? Of course. Cause it looks like I have plenty of real where estate. I was just it kidding. looks it looks like where our little logo is next to that yellow squiggle looks like line. A sperm. It looks like we're a little sperm. Yep, I know. That was a that was an error um, that I made with this kind of like floating into the thing. And I just thought to go with it. I liked it. Made me laugh. <laughs> I like it. I don't approve of children. Um, but us as sperm is hilarious. Well, and we're impregnating the party, which sounds about right. <laughs> so... You know, the chromosomes will, yes, birthing you know, creativity. divide unto you. So there you go. The future sticker <laughs> alert. Future sticker <laughs> alert. Um, oh, my God. I love it. I yeah, love but it. But it does come um, with this candy magnetic hanger, which I love so much. And um, yeah, it's very and, and cute. We just added two new stickers to the collection. Um, so, you know, that aren't moving quite as quickly as I hope they so if you're still well, watching, are, one of them stickers. is turtles. Mm -hmm. So and a new those judge will move Julie quickly. Sticker. So there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I can't, I personally can't wait for my turtle sticker. Should I order one on the website, Laura? Absolutely. Yes. Um, Perfect. yeah, you, you specifically definitely do that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do that. I'm going to do it. Give me a turtle sticker. Well, I feel like um, I've made a lot of points today and yeah. um, people are going to come for yeah, me I think, I'm ready. I think we both did. I think we both did. Yeah, yeah I think we both did. Uh, it is what it is. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I know. Everyone's preparing for to defend us in the comments of the YouTube. But, the, you, know, you know, we made, you we did make to. it three episodes, uh, uh, people, which people I People like what they us. like. And, you know, the more you try to convince someone to like something, you know how that goes. So how we got in this problem in the first place. So yeah. having some man <laughs> yell at me about Jeff Tweedy's autobiography on my one free night, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. It's mm -hmm. a wrap. 
Yeah. Um, well, I think on that note, we can probably wrap I too. Think so. Laura. Sounds great to me. Um, yeah, I like yeah, I like it. Um, Amy's making a hilarious point in the in the chat right now, uh, which will get the most comments preaching open mindedness about yarn companies or Wilco. Uh, you know, people just don't see it that way, uh, Amy. Why the, the Wilco content is far into the process is like a way past the half hour mark. So I'm just not thinking anyone's going to get there. Um, but yeah. they will pause at the minute that we mention this Quince and Co deal and have a lot to say. So I'll, I'll prepare. Yeah. People um, don't like when uh, they're challenged and uh, when they, uh, when their original comment uh, could be proven wrong. Uh, and also, did we really say anything? I mean, we just said like, we don't know anything, so calm down. But people <laughs> love being told to calm down. So there you go. <laughs> I'm gonna go calm down right now. Okay. Uh, I, I, I got million, real hot and bothered. I know, I didn't even show you my sewing stuff, but it's all over there. So anyway. Oh, good. Um, we'll come enjoy, back to it. We'll come yeah, back to enjoy it. Enjoy the rest of your day. Oh my gosh, you too. Uh, thank you everybody for coming and watching and participating. Um, I think we're only get, we're only getting ready to dial the shit to 11, I think, Laura. Um, yeah. We're gonna have special guests soon. That's yeah. gonna be fun. More and more shit is on the way. So uh, thank you for joining us and we'll see you next week. Bye, Bye everybody.